Good evening, everybody. It is six o'clock and we're going to be getting started in a minute. My name is Mark Griffey. I'm Director of Customer Service here with Pioneer. Alexia Ritalik will be joining us in a second and she'll be walking us through the presentation. So I am here. Perfect. Okay, so <laughs> woo, the slideshow is going on its own. There we go. Okay, so um, hopefully those of you who are used to working with your Zooms, if you can just let us know with maybe a thumbs up or something that you can see the screen or put a note to Mark in the Q&A that you can see the screen and that it's at full size, that'd be great. We are having just a few little wobbles with our connection tonight. All right, so ready to kick off, uh, Mark? Okay, so uh, welcome to Pioneer Community Energies uh, open uh, community meeting. We've invited you all here to have an opportunity to share information about what Pioneer is, um, how it works, the upcoming enrollment, your options, um, and the future, and what's going on, and, and then we'll open it up to answering questions. The way we're going to organize this tonight, um, you will see on your screen, there is a Q&A button. Um, we are going to move through the entire presentation because it's very thorough and answers quite a few questions. But if you have a question as we're going through things, feel free to open up that Q&A, write in your question, and Mark will be monitoring those questions and answering them. Uh, we'll also be having a, a question and answer session at the end of the presentation. So we'll open it up there as well. Um, you should be able to open the Q&A and kind of follow along if you'd like. Um, but we are going to uh, repeat some of the questions and then open it up again at the at the end so everyone can uh, partake and we can get everybody's interests and questions answered. So all right, we're going to start off. So let's see. Okay, there we go. All right. So um, what is community choice aggregation or community choice aggregator? Basically, this is a partnership between local governments, Placer County, El Dorado County, and Rockland, Lincoln, Loomis, Colfax, um, Auburn, and Placerville. They came together to create a joint powers authority and in this partnership buy power on behalf of the constituents and then use PG&E's lines to, de um, to deliver it. This is authorized under legislation in 2002. This comes from uh, post Enron 2000 era when PG&E had to file for bankruptcy because the market had gone really wild. It'd been deregulated. There were folks manipulating things and the state had to step in and buy power um, on behalf of PG&E because PG&E was filing bankruptcy and they needed to make sure there was power for everyone. This legislation came into being because a lot of the municipalities, counties and things that did not ho have their own SMUD or Roseville Electric or Reading uh, Electric or one of the um, electric cooperatives didn't have any power, didn't have any control over their energy destiny and what was happening. And so they looked to the legislature and said, figure something out, we can't go through this again. So they created community choice aggregation. It really didn't take off until 2010 when Marin Clean Energy asserted itself into um, a program and began really pushing to be the first CCA. Uh, since that time, there are now 24 community choice aggregators. Uh, Pioneer came on after watching uh, Sonoma Clean Power, uh, Marin Clean Energy, and a couple of others, and in 2016 looked into it, and in 2017 established, and then in 2018 started serving power. We have the authority to purchase power, and we have power over programs, and we have power over rate setting. These are three of the things that we can use to uh, direct our energy destiny. It's led by a board of directors. They're made up of local officials, so all of the jurisdictions that are partners in this program get a seat at the table and they get to have a vote and get to be, participate in leading where we go. Um, we do have uh, regulatory um, oversight to an extent, the California Public Utilities Commission, California Energy Commission, and the California Air Resources Board. This is our service area. So a lot of folks call up and say, hey, you know, is El Dorado Hills involved? Is Rescue involved? Is Placerville involved? This is the area we basically serve all of the uh, pg e territory up to the border with Liberty Utilities, and that's um, much further up the eastern slope. So most of the western slope, it's all in there. So if you're in Placerville or in any area of unincorporated El Dorado County served 
by PG&E for electricity, you are eligible for Pioneer. Um, you can see the service area where we serve Placer County. You can see us in blue and you can see um, where our other utilities are. That's Roseville Electric down in the corner. We cannot serve Roseville Electric because they're a publicly owned utility district, as is that little spot of yellow down there, which belongs to SMUD. So how does this work? A lot of folks ask us, well, you know, aren't you just buying power from PG&E? How can you, how can you do this and be a, a middle person? Well, we're actually not a middleman. We are a direct buyer. PG&E is a company does own some of its own generation, but not enough to cover all of its electric uh, electricity delivery needs. So it goes to the market, just like we go to the market, and we search for power providers, generators, contracts, and things like that. And you can see we have, um, there's so many power providers now out there. There's solar, wind, biomass, there's natural gas, there's um, uh, just a series of different types of, there's hydroelectric uh, of providers. And so we seek out those providers um, who have product um, offer that matches our needs and, and we negotiate for really good prices. Once we've put those contracts in place, those generators put the power on the grid, which is that, that center bullet and delivered over PG&E's lines and poles. PG&E owns those lines and poles. That is their property. The meters, the lines, the transmission lines, the distribution to your household, all of that still main, is maintained by PG&E, owned by PG&E. So any outage, any issue like that, we go to PG&E. That is who our go-to is for um, all customers. Um, that's how that works. From there, pg is delivering our power, the power to their customers, and you get to use the electricity. But now you have a choice in who actually is your generation provider. We're community owned. Um, as a nonprofit government agency, you, the ratepayers, are the, basically the owners. You get to direct your boards. You get to put input into uh, board meetings and into policies and programs. Um, we serve the communities with competitive rates and energy choices. So right now, one of the choices is uh, green energy. You can have a standard pi uh, Pioneer product or green energy. And we'll explain that in a little bit. Um, we have, uh, as of January 2022, we will have integrated in and become about 160,000 customers strong. So we secure electric generation to support our goals. So everyone who is a retail provider of electricity has uh, requirements under the California Public Utilities Commission for renewables and percentages of what your mix is and things along that. So we meet those, but we also meet whatever our other goals, our local goals might be. That might be pushing for bringing in local generation like biomass. That could be putting in Green 100 in response to uh, customers' requests, things along those lines. We provide competitive and stable rates. So everyone knows competitive rates is one thing, but having them stable. Um, how many of us have looked at our PG&E bill and it goes up and down and around and it just looks like it's constantly moving. Well, Pioneer's rates haven't changed since January, uh, since October of 2019. So there hasn't been any adjustments. That's a stable rate. We set them, we let them go for a while and we don't have a lot of the volatility because it makes it very unpredictable for our communities. And that's part of what we have as control. We contribute to the local economy. We exceed state mandates where necessary. Um, if it's a good price, we're going to buy renewables. We'll meet our goals. We'll meet whatever the state has set, but we will also add to it if it makes good economic sense. And then we develop um, customer driven programs. We have down there the community programs advisory committee. This is a group of individuals representing both El Dorado and Placer County, five from El Dorado, six from Placer. They get together and as a committee are going to help bring forward to the board recommendations for programs that work in our communities. Right now, Public programs are directed out of San Francisco and they're directed on a uh, one size fits all. And we all know that doesn't really work really well because San Francisco and the needs of, of Oakland and, and Alameda and those cities and counties is not going to meet the needs of Rescue or Georgetown or Forest Hill or Colfax. So the ability to drive our programs to meet our community's needs, whether it's something that meet El Dorado Hills needs or Placerville needs, that's where we have some local control. And this committee is helping us do that. Hey, Alexia. Yeah. Excuse me. We have a hand up. I just want to make sure someone mm -hmm. is not having technical difficulties. Gail, if you could 
click your unmute and then if you still want your hand up. Okay. Okay. So she put her hand down. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's Sorry, okay. Um, again, the Q&A is there. So if there are questions that come up, um, feel free to put them into the Q&A. So we've talked about saving customers money. Um, that is one of the drivers behind the Pioneer Board. They have a commitment to competitive rates. They want to see um, what they can do. And right now, El Dorado County, in the, if nothing changes today, customers coming to Pioneer in January and February will start to see a savings. It's, it's already there. Placer County enjoyed wonderful savings from 2018 through 2020, and this was the result. Uh, average residential customer was saving $93, and you had um, businesses saving, you know, 2,000 in some cases, uh, smaller ones, maybe 180. Those savings were not refunds. They were, that was money that never left those customers' pockets. It didn't walk out of the wallet and get driven out somewhere. This was money they kept in hand. That meant that money stayed in our community and, and continued to support it. Uh, I think, excuse me, Alexia. I think what's important on that slide there is with the savings is Alexia and I have done a significant number of individualized analysis for customers. And I can say that I've not come across one in which a customer was not getting a savings from day one. And those, those percentage of savings go all the way up to 10, 12% depending upon the customer. So just know that today savings are real, as Alexia said. Yeah, and for some of the solar customers where it gets really complicated, we have done some analysis and there are some places where it walks a real thin line and there's savings to be had, it, but the difference between the two programs um, means that the customer needs to make a choice based on what works for them. And that's the key. What works for you? What is best for you? That's what Pioneer's about. So listening to our customers, we talked about programs that we can do. And one of the things we did is we had done a survey and we had a number of folks respond saying, oh, we want a 100% renewable product. I want to buy 100% green energy. I want to know that I'm contributing to uh, the climate issue in California by buying green energy. Well, okay. So we went through and we created a 100% renewable product. This means that we go out into the market, we buy these renewables, and we have them available to serve that portion of our load for those customers who want that. It's the only 100% renewable option available now. So if you are someone who is motivated by this, you can be with Pioneer and you can get this one. It's completely voluntary. Um, you ask to be upgraded. We don't go out and solicit. We don't go out and push it. We it's a customer choice. For those who are interested in it, the way it works is no matter what rate you're on, you add one penny more to that rate, and that pays for the additional renewables. Um, right? Renewables have been and continue to be for a while um, more expensive than the standard uh, energy product, and so that's why that's there. For a residential customer, it's about $7 more a month, so it's like giving up um, a Dutch Brothers or Starbucks latte, and, and you can have green energy. Um, I have had some folks ask, well, wait a minute, how do I know that the electrons coming to me are green? Electrons themselves are clean. It's a generation source. And what happens with this is that those individuals who buy the 100% green energy and those folks who have solar and put uh, electricity back in the grid and those who have renewable producing plants, they are building into the mix of power that's on the grid and, and increasing the percentage through their demand, through their requests, making sure all of California has more green energy on the grid than it did before. So it's a mixture that actually comes in. It's They're all electrons, it's all electricity that gets delivered, but what you're actually doing is affecting the entire grid itself and making sure that a higher and higher percent of it is uh, renewable. So. Um, we've had a lot of questions about solar and Pioneer. I've been doing tremendous number of solar analyses looking at this for folks. We do support solar. It does work with solar powered systems. We have nearly 20,000 people in Placer County and there are about 15,000 plus in El Dorado County who have solar and, and it does work. We pave out from 2020 and 2021, we've paid out over $375,000 in uh, net surplus compensation for those folks who generated more electricity than they used. Um, we pay, we index to PG&E and then pay a half cent more for that. So for those who are not solar, 
it means that um, when you go through and you've uh, added everything together over 12 months, if you have more kilowatts that you put into the grid than you took off, then you're compensated for those. One of the differences, and this is a big one, one of the big differences between Pioneer and PG&E is that PG&E totals everything up throughout the year and just kind of waits. And then at the point that you started your system, that's your true update. So that true update is annual. And so everything just waits and it just compiles and they reconcile at the end. Pioneer actually does reconciliation on a monthly basis. It's not really a true up, it's more of like a reconcile. And so we go through and you know take a look and if you've generated more than you used, you get credits for that generation and it sits on the bill. Uh, at the retail rate, it rolls forward and it continues to build each month rolling forward until you get to a month when you've used more than you generated and then you start pulling down from that credit to that credit's gone. If you get to a point where you've used more than you generated and you don't have any credits on, on the books, then you would pay Pioneer. And so it depends on your system, depends on the time of year, depends on all these factors on how it works for you. And um, so far though, I have seen from doing 13 analyses, I have two people who walk a line where that it's the annual component that makes a difference for them. Um, but most of the others do save, it, does, it um, works there. One of the other things, I know a lot of solar folks out there have been talking about how they haven't seen notices and they need to know what they need to do. And we are enrolling customers starting in January, February. It's everyone who is not solar and those people who have a true up in January and February. For those who aren't solar, that annual true up is really important. There's credits and there's um, a whole bunch of aspects of that that need to be honored and protected. And because of that, we aren't enrolling solar customers until close to their true up date. So if you're a solar customer with a March or April true up date, you'll enroll in March. If you're a customer who has um, a July or August true up date, you'll enroll in July. So those notices and those things and, and the ability to make your choice and exercise it happen closer to your enrollment date. That's when your account's activated and we can act on your choices. So our customers do have the luxury of being able to decide to join Pioneer early if they want. We just can't set you up for an opt-out until closer to your true update because that's when we can access the information. So. That's how that works. Now, standing up for our customers, uh, Pioneer Community Energy has a reputation for being a fighter. We fight for good rates. We fight for good policy. We fight for protecting the Sierra Nevada and the people and the communities here, which are not like the Bay Area. We have different needs. We have a different climate. So many things are unique and special to us. And we stand for those issues. And we fight and voice those issues at the Public Utilities Commission, at the California Energy Commission, and in the legislature where it's so important that policies that look good on the coast don't help us here. And so that's where we come in. And some of our other types of advocacy have been local spending. Now we talked about how we saved people money in Placer County. We also spend local. It is a preference in uh, Pioneer to buy local, spend local as much as we can. Now, while most of our budget, like over 95% of it goes to buying power, we do have a discretionary component that includes salaries, but also things like legal services, janitorial services, printing, buying um, paper, rent, all those kinds of things. That spending, we drive local as much as possible uh, in 2020. Uh, we reported to the California Public Utilities Commission, we were able to spend 42% of that money in Placer County alone. When we went to the regional level, it was about 65%. And by regional, we mean uh, areas outside of Placer, Nevada County, El Dorado County, Sacramento County, the Sacramento region. Then we went out further to statewide, that was 77%. Um, the out of state purchases for the most part included some special back office and some power supplies. We're happy to report that our uh, back office provider has relocated headquarters, has redesignated San Diego as their headquarters. So now we're going to have even more 
uh, of our dollars being spent in our communities and locally. Um, our drive to buy local includes buying power local. We have bought from Rio Bravo, Sierra Pacific Industries. Those two are in Lincoln. We've bought from El Dorado Irrigation District, from Placer County Water Agency. Not quite our service area, but definitely our next door neighbor. We do talk to Nevada Irrigation District. We do what we can to buy local as much as possible. Um, some of the things that we have the discretion over is supporting our communities, especially in times of need. The River Fire uh, started up uh, this past year and it took out a lot of homes. We had, I think, about 100 that went. And Pioneer, we couldn't do much for the community, but we could, for those individuals who lost their homes, waive their bills. And that was one of the first set things that came up for our board and for our staff was what can we do to help? Well, these people who've lost their homes, they shouldn't have to worry about a July and August bill. Let's get that taken care of. And so um, Pioneer put forward $50,000 for those customers. Uh, in terms of legislation, AB 843, this is a bill that that basically took a program that was in existence. There's money sitting there. There's uh, a program that we could use, but it had been limited to only industrial utilities and nothing's happening. This program is about supporting biomass and providing the funding to help it be cost effective so it can develop and grow. And how many of us would like to see uh, a biomass plant that can take some of the wood debris out of our forests and turn it into energy and reduce the emissions. And so first step for us was getting access to that program. And so that's been opened up to community choice aggregators. And not only do we have that, but in looking at it, there are what are called micro biomass plants. Those plants with their emission controls and their size being so much smaller, they generate between a half a megawatt to, to five megawatts, uh, enough to uh, power a small community. Those plants have fewer emissions than just leaving the material that would waste to rot on the forest floor. Makes sense, but small communities and our small counties can't necessarily totally fund that. So this program opening it up allows us to see what else can be done. Uh, mobile home parks, we found that there was a conflict in law. Uh, Pioneer came into this, we told you that, you know, MCE and uh, a couple of the others had been around since 2010 and 2012. None of them had looked at this. There was conflict in the law that allowed owners of mobile home parks to bypass passing on community choice aggregation savings to the residents of their mobile home parks if they run master meters with sub meters. We recognized the conflict in the law and we pushed for it to be changed both at the Public Utilities Commission and then at the legislature. That legislation went through, changed the law and not only did it affect Placer County, it affected every county in the state, it affected all mobile home parks and uh, multifamily dwelling areas that have master meters. So it was a change that benefited everyone. Um, agricultural customers, there's a program with time of use that was gonna hurt them and hurt them badly. And we argued that for those highly impacted agricultural businesses, they needed to have another year to adjust to this new requirement of time of use. Um, and that saved four, $465 to $14,000 per agricultural customer per year. That was here. Now, Pioneer brought this up and we quite frequently, we bring it up, we rally cry and drag all the other CCAs with us. Turned out in Monterey, it saved some of their larger farms over a million. So it was, it was a big deal. Public safety power shut off. We hear a lot of folks complaining about public safety power shut off and what can be done. And we hear you, we agree. We don't own the lines and poles. We cannot tell pg &E no, we cannot stop them from starting a PSPS event. And for the most part, most of us know that if turning off the power would have meant that Paradise wouldn't have fall, falled or that the uh, Dixie Fire wouldn't have started, we would have agreed to it. We all know that. But PSPS events are supposed to be an action of last resort. That last resort meaning that when all other things have been exhausted, you can turn off the power if it's needed to ensure that we're not tripping um, some type of fire hazard. But when doing that, one of the things we need to look at is what's the criteria for this? Is it being handled properly? It's very easy to shift liability from the lines and poles to the community by just turning off everything. 
but that puts the community in a lot of danger as well. So Pioneer has, since June of 2019, been the lead CCA for the public safety power shutoffs. And we have argued and fought and battled for better criteria, better reporting, better communications, improved uh, work with the communities, better community resources, um, consideration for rural communities, all of these things. And as you, if you can recall in 2019, how many people were out in that huge turnoff. And then it got better in 2020. And then this year, we actually had a few PSPS events called, but fewer actually tripped. And so that's the sign of us making a difference. Now, I will say we have discovered that there's a thing called um, enhanced power line shutoff, uh, safety shutoff, EPSS. We've discovered that one. Uh, we are looking into it because uh, it has been, uh, many of you in El Dorado County have been affected by it. We have folks in Placer County who are affected by it. And we are now working through the CPUC to make sure that a lot of the protocols and things in place for communication and working with customers that we fought so hard for in the um, public safety power shutoff proceeding are transitioned over to that, that um, activity as well to provide customers as much support and uh, insulation from these type of events. We also participate in what's called an arrearage management plan. This is a debt forgiveness program for customers who are on California alternative rates for energy. The um, uh, AMP program provides uh, debt forgiveness. So if you develop debt over co during the period of during COVID, you can pay your bill in full and a portion of your debt is waived uh, until uh, you reach 12 months or the uh, cap of 8,000. And so um, that's that program. So. From there, let's go into how the enrollment works. Now we're gonna to get to the nitty gritty of what's coming up in January. State requires that we have to enroll everybody in a CCA. We have to schedule everyone to become part of Pioneer. It's an automatic uh, system. We know a lot of folks don't like that. And we really appreciate and understand that um, choice is really important. Two reasons we have it this way. This, the law put it in place, one, so that community choice aggregators could not come into an area and select which communities they would serve. They wanted to make sure that there was fair and equal access to all. So that was one of the governing principles. The other one is that you cannot buy load by piecemeal. You can't go through and it's uh, buy for one or two customers at a time. You need to have enough load to go to the market to purchase. And so this opt out component was designed by the legislature to allow that. It is uncomfortable for a number of folks and we hear you, we understand. You do have the choice, you can participate or not participate, but that's the, the reason why it's there is those two things. Um, you can stay with us, don't have to do anything. If you don't wanna be part of Pioneer, just give us a holler, go online. There's the automatic features there and we'll get you taken care of and you return to PG&E. You have a choice. We've heard a lot of folks saying, oh my gosh, I have to make the decision by January 1. Actually, you don't. You have from now in perpetuity, you can choose to leave Pioneer at any time. Um, this is a program that during the enrollment phase, if you leave, you can come back. So you have an you know, easy in out option. Um, we've actually been encouraging folks since we're looking at seeing savings in El Dorado in, tw in 2022, January and February, and even more in, in uh, March, maybe give us a try, take us for a spin, see what you think, and then decide in February. Where it changes is after March, 2022, for the folks who are, who are enrolling in January, at that point, pg is gonna ask you to make a choice come back to them immediately or in six months. And once you come back to them, you have to stay for a year. That's when you still have choice, but you lose the option of coming back at any time. You have to follow uh, pg tenants to come back after a year. Um, so that's what kind of what we are talking about with that one. So Next, for solar customers, this is what I was talking about earlier. A lot of solar customers are confused and having, you know, wondering why my, why their neighbor is getting a notice and is enrolling and, and they haven't seen anything. And here's the schedule why. For those of you who are either January, February, true up, and for those customers who don't have solar, this is how the process works on top. You can see the, the uh, this part, but the enrollment. We send out our first notices. 
in November, they went to everyone's mailing address. So the invoice address you had on file with PG&E, if that address wasn't updated, then it went to your old address. Um, so if please make sure that those are updated if you make, to make sure we get them to you. December, the second notice is um, dropping uh, today and uh, again, some more of them tomorrow. So these are going to go out. Those folks are going to go out in two sets. We're going to have the electronic version going out and the mail version. Uh, the electronic version is for those customers who have e-bills. And a lot of you have expressed, you know, don't want to get uh, more paper and junk in the mail. So now we are going to take advantage of the emailing. So you will, should have gotten one by mail and now you get one by email. And then enrollment will begin in January. A lot of folks have asked, are, you know, is everybody starting January 3rd? This actually works on your billing date. So when you look at your bill, it tells you what your meter read date is. That means that's the day that PG reads your meter and that stops that month's bill and your next bill starts up the next day. So if you have a meter read in December, 2027, well, December 28th, you're still with PG&E. And when that billing cycle ends around January 27, then you would start with Pioneer January 28th. If your millionaire read bill start, stops in January 3rd, then you would start with Pioneer on January 4th. So it all depends on what your reading date is. So whatever date it is, if it's a meter read date is in January, that's the next day is when you start with Pioneer. And that means your first bill with Pioneer will, will have your January usage in it and come to you in February. Solar customers right here. This is your true up month. You can see this. We also have this uh, material available. We can send it to you if you wanna check it out and see. But you can see January folks are enrolling in January. March folks enroll in March, April, rolls in March, May, June, and May. July, August, that means your first notice comes 60 days ahead of time. So this is the schedule. So it also means that that's the, um, that month when you get your first notice is when you can first begin exercising your choice because until then your account's not active with us. So um, we have had some folks go, well, hey, I can't opt out yet. Well, your September enrollment date, well, if you're September um, in right here, then we can't actually do much for you until uh, July. So give us a holler come July. So hopefully that makes that a little clearer for a lot of folks. What about billing? Well, that's another good question. Um, by law, pg e is not only our, um, we have to use their lines of polls, but they're our billing agent. So our charges go on the uh, pg e bill. And so you will see what, what customers with a community choice aggregator have is the unique opportunity to see the two sides of electricity. There is the lines and polls, and then there's the electricity itself. When those two things are together under PG&E, you're called bundled. When those two things are separated, you're called unbundled. And when it's unbundled, it means you get to see what the electric generation rate directly is. And so that's where Pioneer comes in. We are the electricity only. And then you would see on your bill, you'll have PG&E's lines of polls, and then you'll have another page. This is usually page three, and page four is Pioneer. So kind of looks like this. Um, you can see what we've got. This is a uh, standard bill. Hopefully that's uh, large enough for you to see on your screen. Um, you have page three, delivery charges, page four, energy charges. Um, one of the things that folks don't usually recognize, they go, oh my gosh, it looks like I'm being double charged. And it does kind of look like that. But see this generation credit, this yellow line? When you start with Pioneer, look for that line because that line is what you would have paid PG&E for electricity. That's how that works. The other thing is look for this. In Placer County, your 2017 vintage. In El Dorado County, your 2021. And a lot of folks have been saying, I don't get what vintage means. What does that mean? Kind of think of vintage like your birth year, the year that you um, received freedom to make a choice in your generation provider. So it could be considered an energy, uh, an anniversary or a birth date. El Dorado County's birth date, anniversary date of when they um, declared independence is, is 2021. Placer County did it in 2017. Those are important dates because when PG&E assigns this power charge and difference adjustment, which we call the exit fee, it changes for each year. So your bill will not look like what a bill in Placer County would look like. Um, so, or what, nor would it look like someone who's joins Pioneer 
maybe in, in 2025. So um, let's see, this thing is, let's, there we go. Woof. Again, computer problems. All right, so here's pg &E versus Pioneer in a comparison. So that is what the bill looked like on the previous slide. This is what your bills look like. When you look at a pg &E bill with Pioneer and the rates that are applied for the vintage in El Dorado County, there's a 7% savings. Here's what you've got in Pioneer. pg &E, look at their, this is their generation rate. When you go to their electric tariffs, people go, oh my gosh, it says 26 cents. How does, how does this work? Well, yeah, they, that's their bundled rate, but you go a couple of pages in and they'll break down every single charge, lines, poles, transmission, distribution, da, 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 all that stuff. Generation is in there. So their generation rate's 11 cents, 11, you know, 11.4 cents. This is Pioneer's generation rate. We're 7.7 .7 cents. That's what we are. But we have to pay that, all customers who are with Pioneer need to pay that power charge and difference adjustment, the exit fee. It's for legacy costs, and that's 2.8 cents, realms 2.9. Those two things combined give you um, what you pay for Pioneer. This money under the PCIA does not come to Pioneer. It goes straight to pg &E. It's listed on the pg &E side of the bill. But because it is a component you must pay because you're part of Pioneer, we make sure we include it in our rates to give you the opportunity to see a fair comparison. So our generation, pg &E's exit fee, $64.22. pg &E's straight cost, $69.14. That's how that works. We understand you know, that there is analysis that's unique to each different rate class. So when you're looking at these, take a look at your rate class and see what your generation rate is and the PCIA. This is a residential PCIA. The PCIA for businesses, B1s, B19s, E19s, A1s, all of those, it's different. So take a look at the tariffs. And if you have any questions about that, we're happy to help you find them and get that going. So the last thing we're coming to is, um, you know, with all of this, why would you choose Pioneer? A lot of folks have been asking, okay, if you don't give me really super good rates, what else, what else do I need you for? Why would I want a community choice aggregator? And here are some of the differences. We are local control. Our office is in Rockland. Our, most of our employees live in either El Dorado County or Placer County. When you compare to pg &E, they've got shareholders. There's like 940 million shares out there. We are not for profit. We are a government agency. We can cover the costs of our programs, but profit isn't something we're about. Uh, any money that comes in is reinvested in our communities. 814 million net income was reported for pg e by a third party um, expert observer of the utility um, industry. And they tend to, pr they publish these uh, incomes and things kind of tracking what's going on. That's, that's the net income as of June, 2021. We answer to the ratepayers. That's who our number one priority is, you. You are the rate payer, you, we answer to you. pg &E actually answers to Wall Street. A lot of their decisions have to be driven by their investors and their investors' interests. It's the nature of the structure. Good or bad, it's what our you know, capitalism is built on, not a problem, but it also means that as rate payers, there's a difference. You have a voice in Pioneer. Local staff, San Francisco-based, um, Although they are moving from San Francisco over to the Oakland area, but um, um, you know, majority of the corporation is in the Bay Area. We have public board meetings. Corporations have private ones. Our board meetings as public are governed by the Ralph M. Brown Act. They are open for public comment. You can come on things not on the agenda at the beginning of the meeting, and then you can comment on anything on the agenda um, when that item comes up. We also have stable and competitive rates. Um, I've been doing a lot of analysis for folks, and as I go through and do it, I have to mark when a bill is split and there are two sets of dates on it. Um, uh, that shows that there was a change in rates. I don't necessarily know what they are. We'd have to, to look back and kind of try and figure out, well, what changed between March and April? What changed between July and August? What changed between you know, November and December? Um, those things are uh, governed by pg &E. 
that's multiple rate increases. I've seen as many as four uh, during a year. Again, I don't know if they're on generation, transmission, a fee, whatever. We don't know. They just something's changing. Our rates, we haven't changed anything or adjusted anything since October of 2019. Um, PG&E is huge. They're one of the largest, if not the largest, utility in the, in, in the nation. They have over 5.5 million customers. Um, We've reinvested 32.5 million in the community, and we are community-oriented, community-driven, uh, community-based. And so that's kind of the differences between us. And with that, I think we go to- Alexia, our before you jump off that, I just wanted to go back to that. Uh, this yes. is Mark again. Um, you know, a couple of things people always ask is, why should I choose Pioneer like Alexia was talking about? And I think, you know, a couple of the biggest objections we hear, one is rates in El Dorado today, as we've explained to you, is, is cheaper than pg e as it is today before the um, rate increases that pg e has already announced and the adjustment of the PCIA, the exit fee there. But I just, you know, we're really proud of because we were recently awarded uh, 2020. Uh, we received an award for having the lowest generation rates in the entire state of California which is um, something that we feel confident we'll win again in 2021 because we didn't adjust our rates. And so as a result, we, we should be a two-time winner for that award. And that goes, you know, that compares us to PG&E, the, the municipalities and the other CCAs. And so with that, you know, we can stand behind that. But I, I'm most proud of our advocacy and our representation of customers. You know, one of the nice thing is with this this notification of the fast trips and the EPSS that Alexi was talking about earlier. You know, we learned about that when we were doing a community presentation up in Georgetown. And we don't serve Georgetown today and we don't we don't serve El Dorado County today, but we still took the fight to the people that needed to have it brought to their attention on behalf of El Dorado County in advance of El Dorado County becoming customers of ours. And so you know, we always want to look out for the best for our community and our customers because we are the community. If you're a Pioneer customer and your neighbor's not, your, your neighbor's still gonna benefit from a, our advocacy because we don't pick and choose who we want to make sure it gets power delivered to them reliably. We're just representing the regions as a whole. And that's what people do when you're a member of the community. And, and so that's why we're very proud of that. But I just wanted to highlight those two pieces. And Alexia, you wanna to jump to that slide. I've got a couple questions for you. Okay, so um, what you have here is that 800 number is toll free that goes to our customer service group and they can help answer a lot of your questions if you want to spend more time on it. Um, they can also direct you if you get um, into a lot of technical stuff or things that, that get beyond them, they will refer you to someone here. We are located in Rockland. We are a local group, so you are welcome to get a hold of us here as well. Customer service email. We use that. Um, you can find us on Facebook. That's our website. Our website is loaded with information. Um, we continue to add to it and it's dynamic because we try and respond to customer requests for more information, better information and deeper information. And with that, since Mark's pulled up some questions, we're gonna move into the Q&A process. So um, go ahead and click on that Q&A and enter your questions if you have any. And Mark was keeping track of some of the questions we'd like to share with you to that we figured a lot of folks might be interested in. So go ahead, Mark. Sure. And there's a couple of people with your hands up and I'll get to you in a minute. These questions came in earlier. So I want to get those taken care of first. Uh, and Alexi, I'll let you answer them as I read them out here. So the mm -hmm. first one is, can you explain further the indifference adjustment, the PCIA? Can you give them a little more explanation sure. of what that is? Absolutely. So the power charge and difference adjustment was created in 2009 or so. It was designed to uh, provide PG&E and other investor and utilities. It applies to all of them, Southern California, Edison, San Diego. It is a formula that, that looks at when customers leave uh, utility generation, leave uh, San Diego, uh, Santa California Edison or PG&E to go to a CCA or a direct access provider means someone who can retail directly to them if you're a commercial customer. There are contracts that these utilities put into place long ago to provide uh, long-term power needs as part of good sound management of an elect uh, electricity portfolio you go make contracts out there to buy power and those contracts may be for five, 10, 15 years. If a customer leaves you 10 years in and you sell five years on those contracts, you've bought that power already. That's 
that's encumbered, it needs to be paid for. It's called a stranded cost. So what the PCIA was designed to do was ensure that when customers left like that, that the customers who were still behind with the um, investor and utility didn't get stuck with those costs themselves. It was considered fair share. And no one will argue that, that that makes sense. The problem is the PCI since that time, okay, long-term contracts, a contract is gonna end, right? So logically, we should be seeing these contracts fall off. That hasn't been happening quite right. And there've been some things that were extended or there have been some other aspects of power that have been put into the PCIA formula that we are untangling and trying to work through, trying to make sure that the costs are always fair and balanced. So that's where that PCIA comes in. That's what it is. Now in 2022, it's dropping. In 2023, we're not sure what it's looking like. 2024, it's going to change again because Diablo Canyon is coming off line. There are a whole bunch of things that affect it, but that's what that power charge and difference adjustment is. And allegedly, if we all have patience, eventually it's supposed to go away. So we keep pushing for that. And so, but that's what it is, is it's basically meant to make sure that the investor owned utilities and the people who stay behind or who don't have a choice in providers are not left to pay for someone else's electricity. It's a fair share thing. So next question. So the next question is kind of a combo, but it's regarding medical baseline in the care program. It's mm -hmm. do we offer those programs? And then if a customer transitions over, does it come automatically or do they have to re-enroll? Fabulous. Yes. Um, medical baseline. And for those who don't know, Care Fair, it's California Alternative Rates for Energy. There's also the Family Electric Rate Assistance Program called FARA. These are public purpose programs. They are actually programs of the California Public Utilities Commission. pg e is an administrator. And what that means is it comes with you. Nothing changes it all rose forward. Pioneer just becomes your generation provider, but you maintain your, your care discount or your fare discount and you maintain your medical baseline. Those things are set. pg e administers it. So any and all paperwork is still with them. Nothing changes in that process, except you get Pioneer's generation rate. And for medical baseline customers, this is extremely important. That power charge and difference adjustment exit fee we've been talking about, uh, medical baseline customers have been exempt for that for several years. Starting in 2022, they're going to work towards bringing that back for medical baseline customers and uh, reinstalling it, but it's coming in in increments. For, so for customers on medical baseline, you will only pay one quarter of that power charge and in difference adjustment, which means you're going to see significant savings. Um, they're the medical baseline customers savings that I've seen have been actually unbelievable. And it's because that, that PCIA is not there for you. So if you have medical baseline, really give us serious thought, really take a look at having us on your January bill and seeing what it looks like and then making your decision. We'd recommend that. So, but of, in terms of the other programs, absolutely you get to keep them budget-based billing for those who have the, the program where pg e kind of averages out your bills and you just pay a certain amount each month and it covers everything. That stays on your component for pg e which lines and poles are about 70% of your bill. Okay, so you're going to see that when you start to see the breakout with Pioneer and pg e on your bill. The transmission distribution is about 70%. That will still be handled that way. Pioneer's charges are monthly. So for those on um, budget-based billing, um, we can look at what the savings is. But in terms of how that works for what you're planning with your budget, we'd have to see the first two um, bills to be able to take a look at them. So, all right. Um, Hopefully that's answered all of that. Next question. So I've got a couple hands raised. The first one is going to be Terry Knowlton. I'm giving you access. If you could please unmute yourself and ask the question. Hey, Terry, what can we answer for you? You already did, so you can disregard. Oh, oh I, I love, love that. that. All right. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you, Terry. Thank you very much. The next one will be Craig. Hey, Craig. As Mark gives you access. There you go. Can you hear me now? Yep. I can hear you. What's going on? 
Great. Hey, hey, you did a great job. Thanks, Alexi, for doing the presentation. And we really appreciate that. I, I can have two questions. One is we're a solar customer mm -hmm. and pg e has a pretty nice set of tools to be able to um, see information on what we produce versus what we uh, you know, use and things like that. Uh, is Pyre going to be able to provide something similar? That's the first question. And the second question is maybe a little tougher. Um, I recall some years ago in Texas that some customers that went to a local provider of energy all of a sudden started getting bills that were eight or ten thousand dollars a month uh, because their local energy provider wasn't able to buy energy at the same rate that some of these larger customers were like pg and e and so how do you how do you prevent that from happening if we switch over to uh, pioneer thanks okay. very much Oh, no problem. First, on your solar question in terms of the PGE tools and things, those tools stay in place and are still accessible to you. They're available because um, all of the solar stuff goes through that meter and the inverter and all of that data is collected by PGE. Those tools will remain in effect and available. So you don't lose anything there. Remember, when you're a, a Pioneer customer, you have us for generation, but you still have PGE for all of its programs and its transmission and distribution. So um, that stays in effect. So nothing changes there for you. Now about the Texas situation. Um, remember we told you that, you know, we're uh, kind of uh, ruled by or regulated a little bit by the California Public Utilities Commission, the California Energy Commission. We're gonna throw another one in there, the California Independent System Operator. Those entities band together to make sure that California always has enough power on the grid. So there are actually requirements for long-term contracts, making sure a certain percentage of your load is, is um, uh, purchased and has covered. You hedge things to make sure that if there's a price fluctuation, you can you know, weather anything that shifts or changes in the market. All of those are portfolio strategies, regulatory requirements. We have to file our... Um, we, it's called an IRP, Integrated Resource Planning. It is you know, a plan for how we're gonna handle all of our resources and get them in and make sure we have everything we need to cover our customers. That's not just Pioneer, that's every retailer in California. The grid is heavily managed. There's also things called resource adequacy and these are contracts that are put in place. Well, if I go through and I buy from 10 providers and I have all my load covered, but one of those providers has mm, an accident, something, you know, maintenance breaks down. Oh no, I don't have a provider. What do I do? That's what resource adequacy contracts for. It's a backup. It makes sure that we have a backup uh, energy in place. Those things, the percent of resource adequacy and backups you have are part of the requirements. And in addition, if somebody doesn't have the resource adequacy, let's say Valley Clean Energy, which serves Yolo County, goes through and they have a contract go off and you know there's no a generation from this one generator and their resource adequacy for some reason isn't available. Maybe it's uh, somebody else who was down for maintenance. Then the in independent system operator, the CAISO reaches out and goes, okay, we're gonna call on others to activate your resource adequacy. So that safety net, we each have our own safety net and then it's redundant because the safety net cast, cast, uh, kind of casts out further from that. And just to make sure there's even more power, the CAISO also has backup generators on hand. So what happened in Texas, they're not as regulated as that. And people bounce around all over the place and you can shop providers and it gets real competitive and gets real crazy. It's kind of like for us being in the uh, telecommunications market when you have all these mobile providers and you can choose all of this stuff in different rates and different plans and it's kind of crazy. Well, yes, you have that to a limited extent, California, but it's also heavily controlled. And through that process, the goal is to make sure that we always have power. Now, someone will go, yeah, but what happened about summer? Yeah, last, last, this past summer. Well, this past summer, what we had is we had a combination of, of different generators go down. And part of the issue is that California has been, as part of its policy, moving away from any fossil fuel generation. 
you know, taking, they call them peaker plants or natural gas plants or coal plants offline. Um, we only have a little tiny bit of coal, but we do have natural gas plants in this state. Well, you have to replace those by with other types of generation that can work the same way. Natural gas works 24 seven. Geothermal works 24 seven. Biomass works 24 seven. Solar and wind work when the sun's out and the wind's blowing. And we all know that there are some days when we have uh, calm, dark nights, or we have cloudy, calm days, that affects that generation. And so as we're transitioning in this renewables, there was some fluctuations in that that kind of tripped it up a little bit. And so now that's being addressed so we don't have that again. And that's been a huge conversation across all of the agencies uh, this for this past year. And they're getting ready to make sure that 2022 summer is nothing like 2021. So hopefully that answered that question, Craig. Thank you for asking. Is there another one? Yeah, I've got a couple more here. So this one is a two-parter. It's regarding solar credits. And the question is, are we credited more for solar produced during specific times of the day? Or is it a straight end of the month alignment? Or is it time of day actually when the actual over... Let me rephrase that, sorry, buddy. The question is, do they get a solar credit at the time it's overproduced or is it just trued up at the end of the month? So my understanding, is that you are credited um, at the rate for the time your solar is generated. So if you're on time of use and you're generating it during the um, off-peak period, you're getting the off-peak price. And so, and then if you're if you're on an E1 and you're generating during the E1 period, which is the same all day long, you're getting that uh, that rate. That is my understanding of it, and that's called the the retail rate um, there. Now that's for the day. When you go forward and you're looking at net surplus compensation, that's when it would be the extra hours if you've generated more than you used all year long. So if you use more six months of the year and you use uh, less and you generate during the other six months of the year, we look at the balance and see, well, where did you fall? Did you generate more? Did you use more? And that's when we do the net surplus compensation. I hope that's answered your question. Uh, let me know. If it hasn't, and if you have more questions, anybody who has more questions on solar, hit that customer service uh, email and give us your information and let us know you, you, need, you need a deeper dive and we can go through that. So, so I have one more question in the queue. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is, will HEAP customers be moved over from pg e to Pioneer automatically? And maybe H -E you can... HEAP, that it... Help me remember what that acronym stands for. It's um, Home Energy, I think it's the Home Energy Assistance Program. And my understanding is, yes, we can work with LIHEAP and we can work yeah, with some of the other programs. Uh, LIHEAP is a low income uh, component of it. Yeah. yeah, Home Energy Assistance Program. So I believe so. Those are the ones. The ones we cannot work with, for those of you who have them, we do not work with um, Solar Choice. So if you are on Solar Choice, um, we uh, didn't select you for enrollment. Uh, we recognized and honored that that was a pretty hard fought battle to be on Solar Choice. And so we're honoring those folks who are on that one. Um, we also, if you are a smart rate customer, uh, that means that you have made arrangements to get the, the flags and the notices from PG&E about the upcoming um, outages and things, and you're adjusting all of your um, electricity and stuff, those folks aren't enrolled because we can't we can't support those programs um, because they take the data from the transmission and distribution to, to operate. And so we honor those and didn't bring them in. But the rest of the programs, yes, they do work with us. Are there other questions? Other hands? You can raise a hand, toss Mark another question. He's doing very good at reading them out right now. That, Thanks, Mark. <laughs> okay, you, you motivated Craig to answer, ask another question. Craig, if you could unmute yourself and ask a question, that would be awesome. Hi, Alexi. Uh, uh, sorry for the second thing, but, but I just want to say thank you so much for answering both the solar question and the recall in Texas question. And I also asked the heap question also. And I think you answered those to my satisfaction. I appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. And like I said, if you guys have more questions, if you think of them afterwards, which I always do, I go to a presentation and then I think, oh, I should have asked customer service right there. Call us or, or email us and we'll answer those too. Thank you.
You're welcome. Are there other yeah. questions out there? Um, hang on a minute. We just somebody. Uh, uh, nope. That just no more at this time. I don't see any. Um, just as Alexia was saying, uh, you know, our, our desire is to make sure we answer all the questions. Our goal is to make sure that you're armed with the adequate information to make the best choices for you, your family, your business, whatever uh, type of uh, service you're receiving. Uh, we want everybody, of course, to become a pioneer customer, but at the end of the day, we want what's best for you, what you determine is best for you. So our goal is only to make sure you have accurate information. So do not hesitate to call us. We don't mind doing individual analysis. We don't mind answering endless questions. That's what we want to do. Oh. And I don't have any other questions. So with that, uh, oh wait. So I've gotten a couple questions on how to get a copy of the presentation. And so what I'm going to do is I respond all and I can, we can do one of two things we can put We'll put one up on the website, but I'll also, I've, I answered this question a few minutes ago and I sent it out to everybody. So if you look in the Q&A chat, I provided my email and you can um, request a copy of it and I'll be happy to send it to you. If you send an email to that customer service, mine's easier, it's Mark R at Pioneer Community Energy, .ca.gov, and we'll make sure you get a copy of this as well. Yeah, it's public information. <laughs> so right. We're a government we're, agency. We have to be transparent. It's totally available to you. We, we certainly don't mind sharing it. Okay, I have someone here on pg &E site. Average monthly cost of pg &E is less than Pioneer average monthly cost. If you look at that, that uh, rate comparison, it's based on May 2021 rates. <laughs> Things have changed quite a bit since that point in time. And if you look at the current tariffs, the current rates, and that uh, slide we showed you with uh, PG&E's uh, generation rates, Pioneer's generation rates, and the 2021 PCIA for El Dorado County, there is a savings. So yeah, that, that rate comparison uh, tool on pg &E's site, it's behind a minimum of 60 days. And then it has um, some other changes to it that need to be made. It doesn't reflect necessarily what's going on today or what's gonna be happening in January, February. Um, and come March, rates are going up for PG&E. We're still waiting to see how much, and at least it's supposed to be March. And then we'll know uh, where we're at with that. But yeah, it does, it does look like that. How much is the average savings? Um, Alexa, you know, excuse me a minute. I just wanna go back to that other question there too. Sure. The, the big thing there is what Alexia mentioned, but I just want to reiterate is in Placer County, they're at the 2017 vintage year and residential PCIA is 4.7 cents. In El Dorado County, you're on the 2021 vintage year and you're at 2.89 cents. It's a significant difference when you're adding it up and multiplying it out by every KWH you consume in your house over the course of a year. It is the difference between profit and nonprofit, as well as we've been averaging eight or so percent below the generation rates for pg &E. And that doesn't take into account the future as Alexia said. So I just wanna be clear, you guys understand that the PCIA vintage year, it's really easy to go to the website because today, Placer County is, is our only service territory. El Dorado in the future will be represented there. There isn't the documentation by PG&E to support El Dorado County because you as of today are not a pioneer customer. So we have to be very careful. So um, what you can do anytime you wanna look for those things is on the pg and &E tariffs, you can find all of the PCIA vintages. There's a different charge for every year from 20, 2009 to 2021. And so anytime you wanna go into a deep dive on that, give us a holler because it's taken us a while, but we can actually pull it apart now and can talk about it with some comfort level that we know what we've got going on. So uh, the next question you had is how much is the average savings? Well, like I was going to say, it depends on what rate you're on and how much electricity you use. I've um, done some analyses and I've seen some folks are saving maybe a you know, modest $20, $25 a year, and that's with solar. And then I've seen some folks who are on medical baseline 
with an E1 rate saving $300 a year. It really depends on you as an individual. Um, we can show you, I have a rate calculator um, for E1s. I could make one for e 2 you see if you're on that rate. So you could plug in your amount of kilowatt hours you use a month and kind of see if you'd like to make those calculations. We can have that available. Um, Kat, you have, you mentioned pg e charges and exit fee. Do you know if they will charge us if we decide to rejoin them? Here's the interesting thing about the PCIA. In PG&E's rates, it's not pulled out and put on their bill, but it is folded into their generation rate. Um, it's not real transparent. It's supposed to be the current vintage, but we don't have um, the ability to take a really good deep dive on it and verify that, but it is supposed to be part of those costs and it's meant that um, the PCIA for those long term contracts we were talking about, if they set those contracts and it's supposed to be compensated at $20 a megawatt hour and the market's only paying $5 a megawatt hour, well, that contract had $15 to make up. And since they're guaranteed a right of return, that's put into this charge. And all customers, regardless, bundle or unbundle, will make up that market difference. And so that's one of the components of the PCIA. And so, yes, it's there. But it's you're not going to see it in your your rates. It's it's just going to be a generation thing. It's not going to be pulled out separately, and it'll just be whatever the current one is. And you could ask PG and E to dive in on it if you wanted, but it's hard to find. Is there another question? These are all the ones I am seeing. Ooh. I don't see any more joining us. And Kat brings to mind another question. A lot of folks have been saying, is PG&E gonna charge us if we go back? They have a fee. No, they're, they're not going to. PG&E um, has waived any charges uh, for returning to them. They have that option reserved. It's only $4.24 but they have to this date waived it and never charged anyone for it. So you can go back to pg e without worry about that. I've confirmed with them that they're not charging anybody for coming back to them. So you're good if you decide to go. It's totally your choice. Okay, so folks, we are looking at, it is 7.07, .07. we have the, uh, we have reserved through eight o'clock to answer as many questions as folks wanted. And so we're happy to hang on the line if anybody has some additional questions. Um, or if you guys would like, please feel free to exit and go on about your evening. So, and thank you so much for attending. We really appreciate it. We've been setting these up, hoping to help as many people as possible understand their choices and to have the information they need to make the choice that's right for them. Yes, thank you all very much for taking the time to, to learn more and do not hesitate to call us, please. So we'll give it another five minutes or so if there's any questions. If not, we will then discontinue the meeting, but thanks again. Yeah. Ooh, we're slowly TikTok, people are dropping off. <laughs> thanks, Craig, for your, for your uh, questions, those were good. And Gail, I'm happy that we were able to answer yours for you. Oh, hey. How do you get the list of the different rates? Um, so Robert, you can find those on, uh, if you Google PG&E electric tariffs, it will take you to a page and it'll have all PG&E's tariffs and there's the one that says electric. And when you click on that, you'll see every single rate that PG&E has and you just scroll through and find the ones you're interested in. E1 and TOUC, TOUD are uh, residential rates, but you'll also see all the commercial ones there too. Um, if you have a challenge with that, uh, just give us a holler and we can go through and, and get to the links so that you can um, get to those. They are lengthy. They have a lot of detail in them, but if you're a time of use customer, it's great because it breaks out what your rates are and it tells you the seasons and the costs. If you're an E1 customer, it tells you about your baseline allowances and stuff. So it's a lot of the details about how 
the billing works and how different components of those rates work. So it's there, but it's, it's on the PG&E page. So let me know if you need anything more with that. And I'm gonna type an answer. Which rate will I be in first as a residential customer? It depends. Um, two things. Right now, we need to look at what your rate is on your, um, your bill. So basically, if you go to page three of your bill, it's where your, your charges are listed. If you look under the left side, it'll say service address, and then it'll say um, something about the meter, and then uh, and it'll also say what the... Um, uh, the electric rate schedule is, that's that's your rate schedule. If you're an E1, you'll stay on E1. Uh, if you uh, came in and uh, in the last year or so and moved into El Dorado County or PG&E territory, they would have put you on time of use. And so um, really that's there. Now that said, as a customer, you have the right to go to the PG&E website and I'll type it in so everybody can see it. PG&E um, dot com slash rate analysis, you can go to the rate analysis, analysis, there we go. Um, you can go to the um, rate analysis and you can ask pg e you know, what's the best rate for you? And it goes through and looks at all of the rates that are available for you and tells you which one you would most likely save money on and which rate's best for you. And it's a good way to kind of check. I encourage everybody to do it once a year because things change. Energy changes, rates change, um, your usage changes, that kind of stuff. So, oh, um, Mark, Robert says he's raised his hand. So um, hopefully that helps you with uh, finding those, that rate analysis and explain um, about your rates. And if you need more help, just give us a call because we're happy to go over the bill and help you figure out where everything's at. If it's, because um, sometimes it does get challenging depending on the bill. So. Robert, I've unmuted you, so have at it with your question. Well, the question I have is currently I am on E6. Okay. And I have a medical baseline. Yes. Which you is got a good great thing rates. I learned tonight. Yeah. That's yeah. A good thing. Way good thing. Um, but E6 expires at the end of 2022. Yes. I'm taking it that you just mimic all of the programs of what PGE offers and with a different price structure, or will you stay on like a, an E6? Um, past that time. Okay, so you're right. We do mirror PG&E's rates. And part of that is because as our billing agent, it just makes it easier for everybody if we're like the same and you're not having to figure out, well, how will PG&E bill something crazy? So E6 is a closed rate. And yes, it ends in 2022. Um, now, that said, we may not have separate rates, but we don't always participate in the same programs. Um, when it came to time of use and requiring that everybody roll on to time of use who is on an E1 rate, the E6s are still safe and medical baseline is safe. So you're good there. But everyone else who's an E1 or an, uh, uh, I don't think E6, I think E6 is still grandfathered in. But if you're on an E1, the Public Utilities Commission ordered pg to put everybody on time of use. Well, Pioneer's board looked at that and we did some analysis and, and some hardcore evaluation and went, that's going to hurt people. It's going to make them pay more money for electricity just because the rate was changed. And so we said we didn't want to participate and we didn't, um, our folks aren't going to be automatically enrolled for generation. Now they still, because of the Public Utilities Commission, PG will still be working on that for generation, but that is one of the first cases in the state of California where um, the uh, community choice aggregator doesn't 100% mirror what the, PO, the IOU is doing. So, um, you know, if we had other options with uh, rates, we might do that in the future. I don't know what we'll be doing regarding the E6. Um, it's one of those things where how much independence do we have from our investor owned utility and their billing system to be able to do something different, we have to kind of work into that. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, when it comes time for that E6 shift in 2022, 
get a hold of that rate analysis and really see which one works best for you and move to that rate um, when that time comes. So that's the best I can offer. And if you have more questions, just give us a holler. We'll answer that one. So Did that work question, for you, Robert? Yeah, it does. A little bit of a follow-up. Mm -hmm. Will pg e at that point tell me what I'm moving to and then I just move or... I, they, I'm just curious how that all will play out at the end of 22. Technically, you should be getting some kind of notice. It may be on your bill on page two. It may be a notice that comes in the mail, but they will notify you that you're moving and they will tell you if they're putting you on a rate. They may say something like you're going to be moved to the time of UC rate unless you choose otherwise. That's yeah, when you I've go in. Stuff like that. Yeah. 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 So when you see that, go to the pg&e.com slash rate analysis. Take a look and see what the rate is that's best for you, that's available, and choose it. Um, when the time comes, until, you know, stay on that E6 as long as you possibly can. And then when it comes time, you have to make the choice. Um, I'd use the rate analysis tool to see exactly what's best for you. And how accurate, if, I, I, I know that this is cut, wow. Well, mm -hmm. How accurate is their find a better plan tool for you? Is that the same tool you're talking about? Uh, yes, and that actually is pretty good and accurate. Now, it does not include CCA rates, so it's a proxy. But if our rates are technically less than pg es and you know that there's a savings, when you look at the rate plans that they show you and they're showing you, you know, find your best rate, when you look at that one, if that one's good for you, it's going to be even better with Pioneer. And it's right. one we'll have. Right, because of the generation, or, yeah, Correct. the generation, generation component. Lower. Yeah, 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 yeah. And for you, even better because you're on medical baseline. Yeah. No. Um, so <laughs> That'll that's, work. That's 2.8 cents a, a, a kilowatt cheaper. Um, it's with yours, the 2.8 cents is the the PCIA for all of El Dorado County, as a medical baseline customer, you're 25% of that or a quarter of that. So it would be 0.0075 and a couple of other numbers after that. So it gets, it gets to be really small that way. And did you say it was waived till the end of 22 or 23? Starting in January 22, it, um, it goes up at uh, one quarter uh, each year. So it'll be uh, whatever the rate is in January for everyone else, it'll be one quarter of that in 2022. In January 23, whatever the rate is, it'll be half of that. Okay. In 24, it goes up by a quarter each year until it reaches its apex and 100%, which is supposed to be 20, 24, 25. I think it's 25. And do you honestly ever see them getting rid of that because they figured it out? Or is that just a hidden way that pg e uses the money it is we have forecasts that give us you know hopeful uh goals and and you know these wonderful horizons for when it will um fall off it is something that we continue to battle with um uh, every year we make greater headway in chewing it up and making it tight and making it competitive and you know we do hope to see it we, we do hope that it will eventually be gone now that said of course there are all the regulators and politics involved so those things are unpredictable but there is a light few you know several years out that we could see it diminish okay because i mean I don't trust pg e I'll be honest. <laughs> and, and I'm even part of their focus group, to be honest with you. Oh, good. <laughs> um, but they are a publicly traded company, and by law, they are to answer to the, their shareholders. That's exactly. the way that the FCC has that. Yes, it is. And, and that's where it makes it different with Pioneer. As we pointed out that Pioneer, as a community organization, we're, we're responsible to you. You have yeah. every right to come to us and say, change this, change that. I want, I want these things to be different. I want these types of programs. That is the difference. That is a core difference. It's local, local control. You as the rate payer are driving this bus. Um, it's not shareholders and people who are not in our community. It's, it's friends and neighbors. And since we're all part of this, I mean, 
every employee who lives in Pioneer territory is very definitely interested in, in the success of this program and having it work the right way. So it's a good thing. No, and I get I get where you're coming from because I I re recently retired, but I'd spent 14 years working local government, and mm -hmm. uh, um, I was also the president of, of the union there too. So I understand the, a lot of that side of working together to get stuff done. So no, I get it. I I appreciate your time. You're so welcome. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. And if you have Thank any you. more questions, please get a hold of us. We're happy to answer them. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. I, I don't have any more hands up. I don't know if the remaining folks have questions they would like to submit or they're just listening to the other questions. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, hate, I see a Stephen and Robert and Gail and MJO and I see, I'm going to call it K because I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce the last name properly. Is your program, oh, well, thank you, Kay. Uh, is your program going to work if enough customers don't? We're already serving Placer County. We're going to continue going forward and we'll just buy the power for those customers who join us. So yes, it will continue. There, there isn't a, um, enough. There are actually some CCAs where they're just the size of a city, just one city, and they're doing quite fine. So yeah, we'll keep going. And not only, you know, so today we're, I believe the projected numbers are about 160,000 customers when we join Eldorado County, but we've already been approached by other counties and cities uh, to provide service to their residents and businesses. And so mm -hmm. while we don't go out and solicit or push to get communities to join us, we get approached on a regular basis. To, to continue to expand and grow. So yeah, the service, with, go ahead. With that, um, those communities that come and, and are seeking questions from Pioneer about joining and stuff, Pioneer's really, really careful. We found that um, for consistency in programs and for an effective program, having those communities join us that have the same goals, the same interests, El Dorado County and Placer County have similar interests. Uh, the San Diego Power, yes, San Diego, um, San Di uh, it's actually Clean Power San Diego. Um, someone just put in that one. Um, Pioneer is looking to work with communities that have like minds. And so if a community comes up and says, hey, we want to be a hunt, we want to have everybody on all renewable, we want to have huge climate action goals, it's not necessarily the top priority for Pioneer. We might not be the best match. We want to make sure that the communities we bring on fall in line with what we've got going on and the goals we've got set up so that we can have as much harmony as possible to be as successful as possible. So we do kind of take a look at that. And that's why we don't go out soliciting communities. We wait for them to come to us because at that point, they're looking at others, seeing who's the best match. And so does San Diego Power, um, is, San Diego is on a program like Pioneer. Yes, San Diego just um, began their um, power program. They should be serving load in the next year or so. Yes, the San Diego program is pretty successful. So is the Marin and Sonoma Clean Power and uh, Redwood uh, Valley Clean Energy. That one's on the coast. They're an amazing program. And Valley Clean Energy, which is in yellow, is doing really great, too. There are a lot of them out there. Um, if you are interested in seeing more about other communities that have uh, community choice aggregators, we have a trade association called Cal CCA. That's California Community Choice Association. It's a .org and they have a map and it can show you how this movement has taken hold and all the communities that are either got community choice are thinking about community choice or have applied to be community choice. It's really, it's quite fascinating and amazing to see the movement. So I think the interesting part on, on the whole CCA statewide is that, you know, the last I heard the number was five and a half million or so customers, which is about 50% of eligible customers statewide are participating in a CCA. So mm -hmm. it's not a local, I mean, it's not just us. It's not just, you know, a couple people. This is a proven model that is being requested statewide. It's, it's a push for independence and for us to take hold of our energy destiny and decide for ourselves as communities 
what our power will look like and what our programs will look like. And, and that's, that's the great thing about local control is we're in the driver's seat now. Yeah, yeah, there are requirements and things that the state puts out there, but we get to choose where we go and how we get there. And that's, that's really one of the great things about community choice. So oh, this is a question. Do you know if pg and &E is going to stay in business with all the lawsuits? Yes, they will stay in business. Um, they, um, when you watch them, pg and &E has been through a lot of rough times. They had the bankruptcy following the Enron crisis. They had, um, they filed for bankruptcy again, follow San Bruno. They've, they've had bankruptcy after the last uh, set of wildfires in 2017, um, but they, they keep hanging on. And, and that's because you have something so big and so vast that the state can't really afford to have them fail. We need pg &E's infrastructure. We need them to continue to persist. Now, what that will look like in the future, will that morph into something? We don't know. But um, if you didn't have pg &E, we wouldn't have power. We need that infrastructure, those lines and poles. So it's going to be around. We just don't. You know, we don't know what the future will look like right now. They're a publicly traded community uh, company and they're still functioning. So hopefully that answered that question. So any other last minute guys? Questions? Mark, Mark yes. I propose that um, normally we do these from 6 to 7.30 with 30 minutes for Q&A. We've actually done really well today. How about we close up at 7.30? Oh, and you're so welcome. We're happy to, to be here and to be able to help. We'll close up at, at 7.30. So if anyone um, yeah. has any last minute questions, we'll go from there and then we'll, um, That's we'll see what we have. Give it a couple more minutes here and then we'll shut down at yeah. three minutes or so. And thank you guys. But you don't for have to stay for three minutes, people. Yeah. You can uh, you can leave what you want. <laughs> thank you so much for engaging with us. It's been great. We love it when folks um, have questions and, and really want to know what's going on. And please feel free to share this information. Our goal is to take the recorded uh, meeting and post it and have it available for folks to review. We already have a couple on our website that we've done for uh, other agencies, like the Community Services District and some of the, I think one of the area planning committees um, we did one for. And so those are available too. So if you know someone who's talking about things and, and they're confused or not sure, or you, you hear something, you go, you know, that's not what I heard. I don't think that's right. Send them to those, those, those uh, uh, meetings that we've recorded and send them to the site and, and send them to us because we'll answer all the questions. The worst thing that could happen is someone makes a decision about their utilities and, and about something that's going to cost them money without the right information. And, and you know, whatever choice they make is good. It's their choice. But we want to make sure they're making a choice based on sound, solid, accurate information. So thank you so much for your assistance with that. We received um, from Kay a question, or not a question, mm -hmm. just a statement about next door uh -huh. posting on there. No, I was just responding. So Kay, I can tell you that we have been uh, put on a wait list and we are not currently able to get onto next door. And for us to join, it would cost a prohibitive amount of money. 
And unfortunately, that's the communication tool of choice for a lot of residents. And we are trying, we're waiting, shall I say, we're waiting to get on there once we get uh, approved by whomever it is is approving agencies. But until then, what we ask is if folks uh, see stuff on social media, it's like I always used to tell my kids, make sure you verify the facts before you just accept them as facts. And I can tell you that I was told that one comment string on a next door somewhere stated that our executive director made $2 million a year, and um, which is quite funny because I told him that he had to buy me lunch now for the rest of my career here because obviously he was making way too much money. And what we've discovered is there's a company in Texas called Pioneer Energy, which is a for-profit large corporation. And people, when they Google us, they sometimes get Pioneer Energy out of Texas and they don't even catch that. And they start reading up about us, or I should say reading up about them thinking it's us. And it creates a lot of misinformation and people post stuff and it goes like wildfire. So we, if you see something on next door, I, you know, if you say, boy, that's not what I, as, as Alexis said, that's not what I heard at a webinar. You guys might want to contact Pioneer directly. That would be fantastic. You don't have to insert yourself, obviously, but um, it's about, unfortunately, people see stuff and it just confuses them and they accept what's on social media sometimes as facts. So we're going to get there one of these days. It, it is free, except for corporations. We were told at one time, what did you say, Alexi? It was like oh. for... Um, what they told us is that they only accept agencies to a certain point. So they accept counties and cities, but they won't let them see comments. So even if we had access, we could only post information, but we couldn't respond to threads. Um, for agencies like us and um, like some of the water districts and stuff like that, they want at least $35,000 a year to post one announcement a month. And that's, that's just Dense, it's too expensive, just far too expensive for us to do. And, and that, was, that was really hard. Um, it, I, we know it's a good place to be, um, but we have to rely on um, our county partners and our city partners to post information about where resources are and things. So yeah, I know it, it's, it's a great app for keeping in touch with your neighbors. Um, I think some of my neighbors share a little bit more than I'd like to know, but when it comes to agency stuff, it's um, it's a little bit more restrictive. And we have been, uh, you have 24 CCAs in the state of California that have been appealing to Nextdoor to reconsider and it's been uh, not happening. So it's been kind of a bummer. We'll, we'll get there eventually. It's just a matter of when. Yep. Oh, I told him to find out uh, and let you know. Oh, okay. You're, you're absolutely you. right. One of our... Yeah, I've heard a lot of people say, I didn't get a flyer, I pro but then they do like a lot of us do, right? We just go through our junk mail, what we think is junk mail and discard it without looking at it. It happens a lot. So yeah, that's one, <laughs> that is one of the challenges with that one. So um, if, if we've tried want, never times, we've tried a different uh, approaches too. We've tried letters, we've tried larger letters, smaller letters, smaller postcards, larger postcards. Um, it just, everyone has their way of going through their mail. So that's why we have to do four of them because that gives four opportunities to reach out and touch folks and hope that they see something. But yeah, please always feel free to let them know that, hey, you know, there's the website, there's more information. And we're happy if one of your, your uh, neighbors says, I didn't get it, I don't know what's going on. They can call and we're happy to send them another copy. I don't have a problem doing that either. And if they're interested on the events page, of our website, we, as Alexia said, we have recorded sessions. The last one we did was uh, up at the Board of Supervisors Chambers just recently, and, and it's just talking about nothing but the expansion into El Dorado County, and that would be perfectly applicable to the folks in El Dorado Hills. They could go there and watch that, or they can go to the website, read up, or give us a call and ask questions. They can do any of those things. They and, can and ask. No, ahead, I was just going to say my expectation is we'll be coming out there again. We've done more than one presentation in that area. And that, I was going to say, um, I have uh, a lot of organizations that have called up and said, hey, we're interested in, in Pioneer. Can you come present to our group? And, and we're happy to do that. We've actually presented to small groups, you know, 20, 25 people. Um, I've actually had groups of uh, 
15 to 20 on a, on a Zoom meeting because that's how their, their organization meets now during COVID. And we're happy to do that too. So if folks are looking for information, we wanna provide it. And so we're, we do a lot of different things. We'll be with Rotary in uh, January. I have, there's, a Demo, there's another, I wanna say it's a democratic club, but there's another club of um, folks out of Georgetown that we'll be touching base with. And there's some other folks out of uh, El Dorado Hills Rescue and Cameron Park who are looking at some opportunities. So we'll do that. And we are, we are doing, to your second point there, we are doing, working on currently some radio spots as well as um, some other additional print media that we could get out to the public and try to just, again, just increase awareness. We're, we're seeking channels that we can do and touch. We did inserts, for example, with 40,000 newspapers talking about how, you know, who Pioneer is. And that was a big endeavor for us. Uh, we're, we're, we're seeking, we realize and recognize that residents and businesses get their information from um, an infinite number of sources, and we're just trying to touch as many as we can. But, but, but you're right. We are, we are exploring opportunities to make customers aware. That's our end goal. Oh, okay, Mark. We have hit that 7:30 hour. We are good. Are you ready to? And if you guys are okay with it, we're going to. Um, shut down for tonight and thank you so much for all of your participation yeah. and Kay, go on just real quick before we close up if you know of a group or a neighborhood association that would love to have a, uh, a conversation or a presentation we're happy to do it just reach out to us so with that we're going to go ahead and end this event and i appreciate all of your attendance and and persistence to stay to the end we have two winners for the grand prize for making it to the end i Thank you again. And you all have a great night. And if we don't talk to you, have a very wonderful Christmas holiday season. Thank you.